Um, I wanted to uh, share these examples of some portraits that I usually use as a point of conversation and an expectation for what we're to do with this assignment. So first of all, I want to mention these are not student examples. These are not student examples. These are just examples of portraits that I found doing a search on the internet. Does that make sense? So I wasn't looking for anything, anything specific uh, at that time. I was just kind of gathering materials to share with the class to have a talking point. And so one of the things that I'd like to mention is that when we illustrate something, you have an opportunity to make choices about how it's drawn and how it's gonna look stylistically. So first of all, all of these are flat or two-dimensional. They have a, a vector-like quality, what I would call an illustrative or vector-like quality. Even though they're 2D and they're flat, um, I can say that some of these look organic and some of them look more expressive or more mechanical. What I mean by expressive is that they're more, they have more of a stylistic quality that's trying to communicate an idea. Um, I think all of them are expressive to a degree, but this one has more of an organic line. What I mean by an organic line is that the contours of the lights, the shadows, the values that you see on the portrait follow the contours of the face. Now, it is reductive. Reductive meaning that it doesn't have a really wide range of color or values. It has a narrow range. And um, I want you to see that the lines do follow the contours of the face. So this would be an organic portrait. It's following more of an organic-like quality with how it's drawn. Now, um, one of the things that I'd like to point out to you, most of these portraits that are successful focuses and emphasizes certain areas of the face to, to fool or to um, convince the viewer, I think fool is probably the wrong word, to convince the viewer of the character or to believing this to be a finished or complete illustration. So the areas that you want to focus on and add a lot of detail and information are going to be in the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. This area has most of the detail and character that we look at that describe one another's unique facial features. We, and this is what we look at when we speak. We are always looking at each other's eyes. That's how we connect. And then we subconsciously read one another's lips. So we are constantly looking in this area when we are engaging with another person. So if we know anything really accurately in terms of a portrait, it's going to be that space. Okay, so we're going to focus on the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Now, that doesn't mean we completely ignore everything else. It's just that that is where a lot of the emphasis should go. Does that make sense? Okay, now you'll notice that one of the things that is interesting from a composition or the way that it's drawn and framed on this space is that the illustrator made a choice to not include the clothing. Do you see that? And they did include the neckline which implies the clothing. We sort of imagine in our mind how the shoulders or the clothing would be. This is enough to fool us. So it's a clever device. It's an interesting device to leave that negative. Now, if we look at the um, values in this portrait, do you think that it has a wide range of value or a narrow range of value? It's a narrow range of value. There's not a whole lot of different lights and darks in this. But it's still enough information to look visually interesting and to describe who the person is. Does anybody know who this is? No, it's not Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> it's Johnny Cash who said that. Good job, yeah. It's Johnny Cash. You guys know who this is? Oh, that's, that's so disappointing that you didn't know who Johnny Cash was. But you know who Steve Jobs is. That kind of like bothers me a little bit. Oh, it says it there. I should erase it. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Diego. Um, so in this case, um, is, it, is it more natural colors or more abstract colors? Abstract. It's more abstract. And you'll look at the shapes. Are they organic or are they more expressive and geometric? Geometric. geometric. So in both cases, though, we can still extract the character or the features of the face. So we, we, have these, uh, we have these choices that we can work with. We can make a decision to work with an organic line 
or we can make a decision about using something more abstract and geometric. And what I'm asking you to do is to look at your person, your designer. Look at how they would illustrate. Look at what they would do. And maybe find inspiration from that. Maybe illustrate Nietzsche the way Nietzsche illustrates. Maybe illustrate Saul Bass the way that Saul Bass illustrates. Think of your designer and think of the examples of their work. And how could you illustrate them borrowing from that a little bit? Borrowing from that. Going back to the idea of the emphasis in the portrait, the eyes and the mouth, in this case, are very uh, detail-oriented. You'll notice at the forehead, is there a lot of detail going on up here? No. Nope. What about the hair? Well, there's some texture, but not like there is in the eyes and the level of accuracy that we see in the eyes and in the mouth. Okay, the shoulders, once again, they're silhouettes. This is where the emphasis is happening to describe the individual. Okay, so similar style, similar style. It's probably the same artist. It looks like they have the same kind of font over here. Look at the shoulders and the neck. It's white. It's just emptiness. They didn't even bother. Um, you'll notice that the hair also starts to look more like a silhouette, but there's a lot of detail in the mouth and the eyes, and that's describing the character of the um, person and finishing off the illustration. Okay, this portrait, do you guys know who this is? Dolly. It's Dolly. Um, so in this case, this portrait is what I would consider a reductive drawing. What do I mean by a reductive drawing? Well, this has even less values than the others. It's been reduced to two values. It's been reduced to white and black. So this is what constitutes a reductive drawing. It's black, black and white. And you'll notice because of that, we can't use shadow, shade or shadowing, shading, excuse me, shading, to complete the uh, portrait. They're relying on the contours or the line work to describe the features. The wrinkles around the eyes, the wrinkles in the forehead, cross hatching in the hair, the mustache, the mouth. This is just driven by line work. Is the line work organic or is it expressive? Is it following the contours or is it geometric? It's organic. So even though this is reduced to two colors, it still has an organic quality to it. This kind of looks almost like a comic book a drawing, doesn't it? Kind of like a comic book drawing. But still well done. It's very lovely. It's a, a, a great level of detail. And then look, look at the, exp the amount of detail around the eyes and the mouth. The cheeks don't have anything. The chin doesn't have anything. This is where the um, emphasis is being used to create a sense of accuracy and realism. Even further reduced expressive, further reduced. Look at the hair, they just look like giant blocks. But the eyes and the mouth, there's enough there for us to understand what we're looking at. Okay, so do you guys know who this is? This is Bono from U2. So this particular portrait, I find it to be an enigma because I think it's both good and bad. And I also look at it and wonder, why, why did they do this? What were the choices that were made here? So one of the things that I also would ask you to do and strive for is a sense of uniformity. What do I mean by uniformity? That it's cohesive and consistent how you illustrate it. It has a similar line throughout and a similar color pa panel and palette throughout. Um, so if you look at all of these, all of these up to this point, they look very uniform, consistent organic lines, consistent geometry, consistent geometry, consistent style. Even this one that's really reduced, it looks uniform. The whole thing was tackled with the same strategy. But then I get to this one, and it looks like they were experimenting with a lot of different features to try to finish this illustration. So you'll notice that um, they're using some shading effects on the face. But then in the hair, they're using more of a crosshatch or line work. And then look at, the, look at the pattern in the beard. I think that's really odd. And then we have this kind of brush-like quality on the neck. And then we got these splatter effects in certain areas. Um, and then we have gradients. And then all of a sudden, they add like a, a, a color gradient on the earring. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. 
There's all sorts of different tools and strategies being used. I think if it was more consistent and cohesive, it would look better. So um, try, to, try to illustrate it in a way where it looks uniform and consistent. So here we have a Marilyn Monroe. And you'll notice that this one also has a break in uniformity. They're using these uh, silhouettes, these large graphical silhouettes, to create the impression of some of the shapes. But then you'll notice that in parts of the hair, they go to a crosshatch. It doesn't make any sense. It's not co cohesive. It's not connected. So I think that if they would have stuck to one strategy, they would have ended up with something much nicer. In this case, I think they did a really lovely job of being consistent and uniform and emphasizing the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. It has a great level of detail there, so it looks like a nice, lovely, finished portrait. Some of the other things that I find really nice about this portrait are the blemishes and the nuances of the person's face. You'll notice that they put highlights in the eyebrows, highlights in the lips, has this kind of crackled quality to it, and it's drawn, once again, with great uniformity. Look at the ears, are they finished? They almost look like they're out of focus. They're implying the ears. What about, do you even see the hair? It's hard to make it out, right? So we know who this is, but great level of detail in those areas that I have been mentioning to you. Okay, what about this one? Do you think this one's good or bad? Based on what we've been discussing. Does it look finished to you? Look at it. Does it look finished? I would say no. And I think that for me, if, I was, if a student was to turn this in, once again, I just found these online. If a student was to turn this in, I would have assumed that they took on an assignment or a portrait that was maybe too complicated, just had too much stuff, and they couldn't finish it. So where is it not finished? You'll notice that her dress either has a sequence or she's wearing a necklace, and it's just falling apart. It's just these blobs of, of stuff on there. It doesn't look finished at all. Look at the earring, it has the same quality. The eyes look really well done. The eyes look amazing. But then look at the hand. It's not consistent, it's not uniform. I know that I'm saying that you, we can ignore certain areas, but the hand is in the foreground, it's right in our face, and it's holding an object. It's a point of emphasis. It's not finished. It looks sloppy. So um, I think that this portrait is probably more than this person could have handled or didn't have enough time. And it looks like it was heading in the right direction, but it's not finished. So make sure that you try to pick something tangible. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, I think it's great. I think this is a wonderful example. It's very expressive. And it looks very uniform. It looks cohesive. Yeah, I think this is great. This is pretty much what I would expect. So here we go back to that, uh, I call this poly art. So it has this polygonal geometric-like quality. It's really well done. I love the, um, the pattern in her dress. You'll notice it's only one color, but it's enough information there to give it this lacy-like quality. I think that's really nice. Look at, the, look at the level of detail on her lips. It starts to create volume with that highlight. It's really well done. And a nice level of detail in the hair. Beautifully put together. Organic or expressive geometry? Which one is it? Organic. Uh, once again, uh, more of a silhouette. Uh, it's a reduced color palette. There's not a lot to it. Is this Leonardo DiCaprio? Is that who it is? You know what, what is this from? I don't know what it's from. Uh, really lovely texture in the beard. And the, look at the line work. Look how it looks uniform. It has the same sort of gesture throughout it. It looks connected. Um, does anything look odd about this portrait, though? Is there anything that seems off about it? Yeah, that highlight on his forehead. What, what, or is that a Band-Aid or a highlight? I don't understand what's going on there. So that's one thing that I think is kind of odd. Uh, here's an example, same, same artist that we've been looking at. Um, this is, I think, a portrait of his daughter. We have a Jim Morrison. 
Very expressive, uniform, colorful, has a poly art like quality. This one reminds me of that dolly example where it's reductive and there's a lot of um, uh, two dimensional contours. Look at the look at the line work though. Look how uniform it is. It all all of these little wisps and lines come to a point. They all have this like this pointy like quality and it's consistent all the way throughout. It has a nice uniformity and the shadow even though it's a crosshatch effect, it's uniform everywhere. It has a nice finished, controlled, polished quality. And a nice level of detail. I can understand who this is. You guys know who this is? Jack Nicholson, yeah, that's right. Um, I also think that these are really lovely. These are heavily abstracted. Heavily abstracted. But stylistically, I think they look really beautiful. Um, look, at the, look at the size of some of these polygonal shapes that allude to the forms of the face. Really lovely. Organic, expressive, almost cartoony. What about this one? This is a really good one. It's really powerful. It's really well done. This is Shepard Ferry. You guys know who Shepard Ferry is? The Obama poster guy? So this is a this is uh, an illustration where you'll notice that the line work once again very uniform. It all comes to a point. All of the lines have a similarity to it. The sh the lighter values have this pointy quality. The details in his eyes come to a point. The nose comes to a point. The wisps of hair have a similar gesture and line. The contours in the muscles looks very uniform. So I'm mentioning this so that way you have a context or some ideas of some of the things that I'll be looking for in yours. And this one here is unfinished. This one is not completed. This is a bad example. I can't make out, I can see that it's a person, but I can't really make out the features. This is not enough. Okay, so I just want to give you a bad one. This is a bad one. 